Hey guys, today we are finishing uh, the Ephesians passage on uh, marriage. And uh, here we see uh, uh, further instructions on how we husbands need to love our wives. Uh, there's also a reminder for the wives to, uh, to respect their husbands here at the end as well. I'm reading uh, Ephesians 5, uh, 28 to 33, uh, which says, So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. All right, so a few things here. Number one, if a husband knows how to love himself, if he knows how to feed himself, nourish himself, and cherish himself, right? Uh, so he's already uh, graduated. He's, um, he's more than ready to be able to meet his wife's needs uh, physically, and even emotionally, I would say, to a degree. Uh, Peter does tell us in another passage uh, as husbands to uh, to treat our wives with understanding, lest our prayers be hindered, right? Uh, we'll look at that in the coming uh, days at that passage. But uh, number one, uh, as husbands, we, we are providers. We, we need to uh, provide for our wives. We need to meet their physical needs and also their emotional needs. We read last week we're, that we're in charge of being the spiritual leaders of the home, right? We're not Jesus, you know, we're not, we're never going to fill the shoes of Jesus, but we do need to do our part in meeting their spiritual needs as well as their spiritual head in the home. Uh, the next thing we look at here in this passage is that of being one, oneness in the marriage. Uh, what is that about? Well, the oneness in the marriage happens uh, spiritually and gradually. Uh, there needs to be a separation if there's going to be a, a, a unity within husband and wife. And that's why that's why uh, here he's quoting back from Genesis from the very first marriage here in verse, what is it? Verse 31, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Notice how without a, a leaving, there is no cleaving, right? If you want to cleave, be glued together with your wife, because that's really the, 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 the Hebrew word there in the original. The, the cleaving is a gluing together, really becoming one. That's not going to happen if you're allowing somebody else into your marriage, be it a family member, be it, uh, uh, you know, the, the in-laws, the parents, the, even the children, even the friends. I've seen that happen often. No one has authority or permission to come in between you and your spouse and wives. You need to make sure that as your husband tries to lead, that you respect that, that you respect him and the Lord will bless that as both parties obey him. God bless.